Hi everyone, I'm Andy Neal and this is part two of my tutorial on storylines, compounds, and connected clips in Final Cut Pro 10. Now that I have a foundation for my story, it's time to add B-roll. I'm going to grab a few clips to drop into my project. Okay, I'm just using the skimmer to get in the neighborhood and then the J, K, and L keys to zero in on a shot. I'll just mark an in here and an out and then hit F to make it a favorite just in case I need to go back to this shot. Then with my playhead at the start of my project hit Q to create a connected clip. I'm just gonna find a couple more clips. Okay, uh, so you quickly create a range there go and favorite the range then hit Q to drop it in as a connected clip. Let's do one more in, out, favorite it, and then Q to connect it. When laying down B-roll in your edit, the connected clip seems to work fine. It sits above the voiceover track in the primary storyline and pretty much works just like in any other editing program. The difficulty lies when you're trying to trim, add transitions, or otherwise complete a fine cut of your story. A lot of the great trimming tools that are available to me in the primary storyline don't work with connected clips. I can't swap shots around like I can in the primary storyline. It has to be done manually. Also, I can't perform a rolling trim edit. Trimming of connected clips is very one-sided. I can move this clip over and I can move this clip back, but I can't do both at the same time like I can in the primary storyline. It's at this point that most people begin to second guess why they even put their audio in the primary storyline in the first place, instead of putting their b-roll there. But the real problem is that in these cases where you need to be able to add transitions or swap shots around or quickly trim, connected clips are just the wrong tool for the job. What we really need is a way for our audio and video to each be in a storyline. This is where the secondary storyline comes in. I'm going to select my connected clips and hit Command-G to convert them into a secondary storyline. The indicator will be this bar that is enclosing the clips. With the 10.0.1 update of Final Cut 10, you can also create a secondary storyline by adding a transition to any connected clip. You see, secondary storylines have a lot of the same features as a primary storyline, including the ability to add transitions between clips, use all of the trimming features, and the clips are also bound to the magnetic timeline which makes swapping shots around really very easy. But at the end of the day, a secondary storyline is still a connected clip. It's connected to the primary storyline, so just keep that in mind. I'm going to make sure that my secondary storyline is selected by clicking this bar. Then I can go back up to my event browser, or my media browser here, and find my next shot, and then add it into my storyline by hitting E on the keyboard. As long as the secondary storyline is selected in the project, I can use no normal keyboard shortcuts to add media into it. If I try a connected clip, however, I'm just going to skim somewhere over the storyline and make sure that it's still selected. Then I'm going to go up to the event browser and choose a clip. I'll just mark a quick in and out and hit Q to drop it in. Notice that the connected clip is attached to the primary storyline, not the secondary storyline. That's because only the primary storyline can have connected clips. But do you even need connected clips? I mean, why not just put all your B-roll into secondary storylines? You can actually have more than one, so that's not a problem. Well, connected clips are actually very useful. For one thing, by using connected clips, you can ensure that certain shots will always be associated with a particular clip in the primary storyline. They're also particularly helpful in audio, where you often need to beef up a scene with sound effects and foley. And they are essential in compositing, where you're going to need to have one clip above another, such as when adding titles, or lower thirds over video, or even keying green screen clips. The final editing workflow to talk about is the compound clip. This one has an expanding list of uses in both projects and in the event browser. To show some of what it could do, 
I went ahead and made my edit a little bit more complicated. Here you can see that I have a section of my project with some overlapping clips. I've got a mask clip here sitting on top of another clip. And it's even got a blend mode added for some stupid reason. And there's a title over everything. I've also got a secondary storyline that contains a couple of clips with a transition in between. On the audio side, I have some music applied to the whole project, as well as some sound effects that I added. With these sound effects, I'm going to adjust the volume on a few of them independently. I'll just bring down this one, and maybe this one. By the way, here's a little tip. If you don't like dragging this little bar down to adjust the volume, you can just select the clip and then lower or raise the volume by 1 dB with the control plus and minus keys. I'm just hitting control minus to lower the volume on this one. Okay, now presumably I have my sound effects mixed exactly the way I want to in this section of my project. I also have it timed perfectly to this video, and I want to ensure that everything stays in perfect harmony. So I'm going to lasso these video tracks, including the title and the secondary storyline. And then holding down the command key, I'm going to select just the sound effects as well. Not the music, but just the sound effects. And then hit option G to turn all of this into a compound clip. Because video clips can contain embedded audio, what we're left with is a single compound clip that contains everything we selected. It plays back exactly as it did before, video and audio, but now all those sound effects and graphic effects and titles are all combined. If I open the compound clip by clicking this little icon, I can see how it looks in its own timeline. The layers are in the same order as before, only now the connected clips that were on the lowest level of the main project are transferred to the primary storyline here. I can also select the sound effects here and create a new compound clip inside this compound clip. Well, why would I want to do that? Well, if I like, say, the relative mix of these sounds, but I want to adjust their volume globally, the compound clip lets me. It acts like a kind of submix. It's also helpful for dropping a filter that would affect all four clips at the same time. There's also an interesting way to use compound clips in the event browser. All of this video was shot on a P2 camera and imported. On most file-based cameras, each time the camera is turned off and on, a new clip is created. In some situations, this can create a lot of short clips. Take a look at my browser. I have six clips that I called line. Each one of these clips by itself isn't very long, but they all cover the same basic B-roll. I'm going to select all six of them, and maybe I'll include this one as well since it says line in the name. And now I'm going to create a new compound clip with the option G shortcut. When I create a compound in the browser, it prompts me to name the clip something that it doesn't do when you make them in the timeline. I'm just going to give it the name Line B-Roll. I know, very original. And hit OK. A new compound clip is created in the event browser, and I can just drop it in to whatever keyword collection I want. And now I have a single clip that contains all of my Line B-Roll. And if I find another clip that I want to add to my compound, like this shot called Sign to Line, which I didn't notice before, I can just double click the compound clip to open it up in timeline mode, select the new clip, and append it to the end with the E shortcut. The new clip is added to the compound clip, and when I back out of timeline mode, I will be able to see the new clip at the end when I skim over it. Well, hopefully this helps you decide when to use a storyline, connected clip, or a compound clip. I'm Andy Neal, and this has been a Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial.